a world of enchantment, full of strange and cunning creatures, an epic adventure with outstanding rules of play. This is the story of the first game book to offer a continuous, multi-volume saga. This is the account behind a legendary title that left its mark on a whole generation of readers. This is the tale of sorcery. Created by Steve Jackson in the early 1980s, along with the very first fighting fantasy game books, Sorcery is a four-part solo adventure series that will take you through the dangerous lands of Kakabad on a quest for the legendary Crown of Kings. The series was first published in the UK by Penguin Books, beginning in 1983 with the Shamutanti Hills, followed by Kari, City Port of Traps, and The Seven Serpents in 1984, and The Crown of Kings in 1985. When the first volume was published, there were not many fighting fantasy game books around, apart from the initial one from 1982, The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. A few others were also published in 1983, like the Citadel of Chaos, or The Forest of Doom. But Sorcery introduced a groundbreaking new system, where you could play as a wizard and not just a warrior. And even more important, it was the very first title to become a series of several books. Unlike fighting fantasy, each sorcery volume could be played as an individual adventure or as part of the overall arc. The scenario by Steve Jackson remains one of the best of all time, despite the large number of game books released since then. It was matched by the very good illustrations by John Blanche, who also designed the cover of the four books, at least for the British edition by Penguin Books, the one you see here. I find him especially good at depicting backgrounds, like rooms full of different items and various landscapes. Many creatures are also very well done, and they all seem to have the same kind of crooked expression, typical of the artist's style. I remember that as a kid. I didn't like the style so much as now, and that's why I was slow to develop an interest in the series. It was a shame because this is clearly among the best. A friend of mine was also very much into game books, and we discovered them together in 1984 or so, and he recently made this beautiful reproduction of one of the emblematic characters in the first sorcery book. Set in the fictional fighting fantasy world of Titan, on the continent known as the Old World, a powerful artifact known as the Crown of Kings, which bestows magical powers of leadership upon its owner, has been stolen from your peaceful country of Analand by the Archmage of Mapang Fortress. With the crown, the Archmage intends to gain leadership of the lawless and brutal region of Kakabad and plots an invasion of all surrounding kingdoms. You are the lone hero who has been dispatched to retrieve the crown and save this part of the world from chaos and destruction. The quest is divided between the four titles in the series. In the first one, you were to cross the treacherous Shamutanti Hills that lay between Analand and Kari, the City of Traps, which is the first stage of your long journey. The second book relates your adventures inside the city, where among other things, you need to find the four lines of a spell required to open the northern gate and allow you to reach the lands beyond. In the third one, you must cross the backlands, a vast and dangerous country, while defeating the seven serpents of the Archmage before they can warn their master of your coming. The final book deals with the most important part of your quest, as you are to penetrate the Mampang Fortress, defeat the Archmage, and reclaim the Crown of Kings. 
While these books can be played independently, they are much more efficient when played as a whole. As you travel through the lands of Kakabad, there are many hints from one book to another as to what to do in the next stages of your journey. And several items you find in your current adventure prove very useful in the next one. For instance, you can find the Shamutanti Hills a key to one of the gates of the city of Kari, which can allow you to sneak in quietly instead of going in the open and attracting suspicious eyes. There are also many direct references to numbered sections of subsequent books from the one you're currently playing. Meaning, for example, that in Book 2, you can be asked whether you have a piece of parchment that you found in Book 1, and which contains the number of a section of the current book that you can reach to avoid extra hardships. These shortcuts between volumes make you feel like you're on one big adventure instead of four smaller ones, which is what it was intended to accomplish. Sorcery introduces new features to previous fighting fantasy game books. The principal difference is the ability to play either as a warrior or a wizard. The warrior game rules are pretty much the same as in other books, with the usual set of three characteristics, skill, stamina, and luck. Skill is used in fighting, stamina represents the health points, and luck is self-explanatory. But as a wizard, it's a whole new world. You have weaker fighting, skill, capabilities. But on the other hand, you can use your stamina to cast magic, with no less than 48 spells that can be used in many different situations. Playing as a wizard, you need to memorize spells before embarking on your journey, since you're not supposed to access the magical spell book once you begin your quest. Each spell has a three-letter code word, and most of them have a very specific scope of action. There are few generic spells that can be used almost everywhere, without particular context and without ingredients. For example, the fighting spells Zap, a lightning bolt that fuses from the finger, and Hot, a fireball that needs to be cast with both your hands, or the defensive spells Fof and Wall, which create protective force fields. These basic, multi-purpose spells are easy to learn, but costly to cast. They require four stamina points, which is a lot considering you have around 15 points in total. But generic spells are a minority. Most of the spells you'll find in your book apply to a very precise situation, and no other. In addition, most of these require some ingredient or item. Beeswax to put on the edge of your sword while casting the spell Raz to sharpen blades, or a golden mirror to cast Kin, the spell to create a clone of the creature that's facing you. These requirements greatly restrict the possibilities of using such spells. But on the bright side, these are not costly in stamina, and often very powerful. Spells are absolutely critical since they can decide right away the outcome of a fight or save you from otherwise desperate situations. But if wrongly used, they can also backfire and become your doom. That's why you need to be very careful when using magic. When given the option to cast spells, you're presented with a small selection of three-letter words to choose from, usually six. Several false code words are mixed with correct ones, if you happen to pick one of those dummy codes, you not only lose mana, but also precious time, which can prove catastrophic. If some creature is about to jump on you, and instead of casting a fireball or a protection field, you mumble a meaningless spell, well, all that you imagine what would happen next. But even if you choose an actual spell and not some dummy one, it will prove useless if you don't have the ingredients or item it requires, or if you're not in the right situation. For example, the spell Gob, which creates magical instances of goblins, requires actual goblin teeth to work. Alternatively, if you cast the Rap spell to try and communicate with a giant rat, you'll soon find out that you should have used Yap instead, which is the right one for animals, whereas Rap is for other creatures. I find this wizard feature very well designed. Magic is extremely powerful, but its power needs to be mastered and used with great caution. Otherwise, it's likely to do more harm than good, a concept that proves very realistic and entertaining. Now, a few words about the look and feel of these old, epic, and rare-to-find books. This edition of Sorcery has the thinnest fonts and the largest format of all game book editions I know, and I know quite a few. Look for yourself. 
As compared to fighting fantasy titles by the same publisher, you can see that Sorcery's format is slightly larger, and the fonts used for the text are a little smaller. At least, it's the case for this edition with the red, jagged header. And as compared to other publishers, like here with the Lone Wolf series, the difference is even more obvious. Lone Wolf has clearly bolder fonts and a smaller print format, but each of these printing options has its pros and cons. Whereas I liked more the bolder ones as a kid, I tend to prefer the thinner ones now. It kind of makes the book look more mature. But it also means that you get more text overall. In addition to more condensed content and larger format, Sorcery also has more paragraphs than the average game book, which is usually around 400. The first three volumes of Sorcery have between 400 and 500 paragraphs, and the last one has a staggering 800. This makes it by far the largest game book ever published. Just look, it's twice the size of a normal one. But this is also because Sorcery has a large quantity of very short paragraphs that you can find in other game books. In general, of course, just like all game books, Sorcery mixes long and short sections, but still has more of the short ones than the other books. This is due to the magic system, which induces more choices in average than in any other book series. In a standard situation where you have two or three choices to make as a warrior, Sorcery offers six more if you play as a wizard that makes it close to ten choices all combined. And that's quite a lot as compared to the usual game book system. To compensate that and to avoid getting jumbo-sized books, many sections are reduced to a small portion. This is absolutely okay, because in the large majority of cases, magical spells produce fast and short-lasting results like a blast, a jump, or a heal on a wound, which makes them quite simple to depict. You don't need to write much text for that. As a result, navigating through sections in a sorcery book proves an even more interactive experience than in other game books. You quickly jump from one part to the other, and even though it makes you constantly flip back and forth, it creates a sense of action like never before. The spellbook itself takes another few pages at the end of each book in the series. The first pages are dedicated to basic or generic spells, which are very costly. But as you can see, all the rest of the 48 spells cost only one or two points. These are the spells that require specific context to be cast and that allow for the most spectacular effects. The last one is an exception. The Z spell will cost you a stunning 7 stamina points. But, as the spellbook describes, its effect is quite unknown, since almost no one has ever used it. Will you be that person? Another interesting feature is that sorcery books have dice printed on the bottom of each page, making it possible to randomly flick through them for the equivalent of a dice roll. As you can see, Sorcery is quite a unique gamebook series. Just like Lone Wolf, it has become the pattern for subsequent works by other authors, in not only books, but also video games and even films. So don't hesitate, enter the magic. Dive into the wonderful world of Sorcery. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to Age of Ink for more on books and to Retro Dreams, my other channel, on retro computers and games. Thank you.